That's the guts of a circa late 1978, early 1979 Hewlett Packard 3435A digital multimeter. Had this thing for a great many years and uh, it had, when it was new, an a, um, internal rechargeable battery option which just used a battery that contained these three lead acid they're like D cells but they're about a hundred mils greater in uh, height and diameter so they aren't exactly D cells but they're fairly similar in size thought the tolerancing and the dimensions might be but whatever I'm thinking of replacing it either with a um, 2.6 ampere hour lead acid battery something like this one which I had for a size reference this particular one is dead though and um, or a bunch of uh, NICAD sub -Sus. although given that the charging is designed for lead acid, it'll probably go that way. And the charge management one not is handled by that board, which I will get to in a bit. <coughs> First off, on the main board, there's this uh, ceramic dip 40 device, which is a um, custom IC that's the main processor for the unit. Master DMM control chip. I had no idea what it is because, as with most of the integrated circuits in this thing, it's a um, custom Hewlett Packard. A part or custom branded anyway so I don't know exactly what that is so I don't know what the specifics of the device are but that is the main control chip there's a couple of uh, other devices this one which is also custom branded I'm guessing from the F that might be a Fairchild device it's um, a 1826-0010 most of the custom devices in this thing have either a 182, they have a, an 8-digit part number that starts with 1820, 1826, or 1813. So they're all uh, probably part of the same set of chip, of a standard chip set, although a lot of these are not. Hill packet devices like those, two um, multiplexers for the um, LEDs and the display are um, both made by Motorola, as are some other devices, which I will get to in a bit. But of course, to be a bunch of dicks, they all have custom part numbers on them. But uh, that's the CA307 uh, operational amplifier. There are a couple of those, so not all the devices are custom. And then that's a 2N2904 uh, transistor. Over here is uh, ripple suppression capacitors and um, rectification diodes for the main input supply, main input transformer, 1 8 ampere fuse. Um, uh, IC uh, mains input and various uh, 0 0.27 ohm yeah, 0 0.27 ohm uh, fuse um, resistors and you can see two of them have been cut out because these are how the mains input is selected um, actually on the top of the um, shield for the uh, analog section there's a um, diagram it says for what potential ranges are supposed to be, uh, other re what resistors are supposed to be put where for what input potential ranges. But anyways, and there's some more devices. Uh, another custom device made by RCA, or made by RCA for Hewlett Packard. That is a uh, probably a, a transistor or possibly a potential regulator. And there's um, there are a bunch of uh, multi-pin uh, TO18 devices, uh, another CO307C. A lot of these are custom parts, but those are going to be either um, instrumentation amplifiers or potential regulators. Some number of trim pots, again, for adjustment and calibration and whatnot. Another trimming capacitor. These two devices with these uh, deep cavity lids, those are going to be probably the um, analog digital converters and uh, various um, analog signal processing and whatnot. And uh, one interesting thing to note is that a lot of the connections on this board use these uh, plastic inserts where a bunch of devices are inserted into a solder cup. 
which is then um, filled with solder. I'm guessing probably those are very, very high impedance connections and connections on the board had too low of an impedance. I don't know, since I wasn't around 30 years ago when this thing was made, actually 34 years ago, and I'm not exactly familiar with circuit design tech practices from that era, but I'm guessing those are probably for um, um, impedance purposes. There's another C307 uh, amplifier. And another thing to note is that some of these connections, like those and that one, have these clamping diodes. And what those are for is those are to limit excursions and potential on that, most likely to avoid damaging the devices, which are, at least at this point in time, pretty much irreplaceable. And back then would have probably been very expensive because this was a laboratory grade piece of equipment in its day. And it's still a pretty high end multimeter, even nowadays. And um, that pretty much is at the pair of diodes, one of which. They're both reverse biased, one of which connects the device or the area of the circuit under test to uh, or under protect or that's protecting the ground, the other one connects it to uh, some supplier rail. The idea is that any potential excursion the diode will clamp to either its forward potential below ground or its forward potential above um, uh, some supplier rail. And it's actually a somewhat common technique. And there's several bunch of other miscellaneous passives. Like over here, this is the uh, clock generator circuit for the uh, main control chip. Um, one only other really super interesting thing to note in this thing is this uh, Corning Glassworks device down here, which I'm guessing is either a diode or a capacitor. It's marked. CY11 CY1CC220G Don't know exactly what that is though Then there's just a number of uh, switches for the front panel And that thingamajig which is just the back of the current input which has a built-in fuse holder built into the banana jack <laughs> And over here is the um, battery control board there's a RCA um, 23055 that's probably the pass transistor for uh, the uh, charge control circuit there's this thing which I'm guessing is probably some kind of potted transformer or something for the potential conversion on this board because <laughs> I think this board has some kind of um, early kind of a switching potential regulation to generate the uh, various supply rails because this thing does have a uh, a negative seven supply of it's negative seven volts, positive seven volts, positive six point five volts, and positive four point six volts for all the various uh, analog circuitry. This is probably stuff to generate that when it's running off the battery, which is just uh, six volts. There's a couple of uh, Motorola custom branded chips: one eight two zero zero nine four nine, one eight two zero zero nine three eight, and a one eight two zero zero nine four four. So don't know exactly what any of those are, but those are probably um, switching drivers or something. And there's that, a um, 1826-0139, possibly an operational amplifier for uh, controlling the charge management. And there's a 2 ampere f uh, fuse for uh, overcurrent protection for the battery. One interesting thing to note about this device, though, is that... And there's a... Uh, that it is a uh, Singapore... Oregon. Texas Instruments 7820 okay that's week 20 in 1978 can't really read the part number on that but um, there's a transistor one interesting thing to note there is that there's a number of these um, interesting uh, package they're marked GEF8 so they're general electric devices, I think. But it's interesting to note the um, <coughs> um, package, which was a transitional thing when they were transitioning from um, 
both the epoxy um, cylinders and um, transistors that were built on a ceramic base to the uh, TO92 style, which is really, which became a, which is a much more common type. Whereas the TO92 shape on one of these bases, but um, somewhat interesting to see something that um, of that nature, which is somewhat archaic for the late 1970s. But um, anyways, there's just more passives, diodes, possibly potential references, possibly rectification for the output of the transformer. I don't know. And there's this a 0.27 ohm. Uh, uh, half watt uh, carbon composition resistor, which, from the way it looks to be, which looks to be just a, uh, a a shunt for determining current in the battery. And uh, about the only other interesting device I can see in this thing is um, that, which is this two pin metal can, and it's somewhat interesting to see that device with a. Uh, only two pins in that package. I'm guessing that's probably a potential reference of some sort. And um, pretty much it for the thing.